feel like this guy's starting to look like someone else to me. But who is it? Who exactly is this? Oh, duh, it's Queen Elizabeth. In this episode of the Artist Studio, we're going to turn the Styrofoam Ball and a bunch of model magic into one of the most iconic characters from the Zelda series. Now, while most people probably wouldn't consider this object as a character in its own, it's the design of this object that certainly generates a lot of character. Specifically, this guy from Majora's Mask. Zelda is one of my favorite game series, and then Majora's Mask is like right up there as my favorite. That's right, we're gonna be making the Majora's Mask Moon, but not just a simple sculpture. I have a few tricks up my sleeve that are gonna be making this build just a little more awesome and bringing it up to the next level. Before we get to that, I need to start sculpting the main features of this moon's face. I originally approached this design sort of with the styrofoam ball in hand, and I thought I could just plaster on this model magic and start modeling away. But after just a short time modeling, I started messing things up. Immediately the moment I started working on another section of the model, this soft modeling clay was just too easy to bump and... <laughs> Oftentimes it was my own fingers that were flattening parts and I couldn't even tell because the clay was so lightweight. I knew this was going to need some better planning. So let's remove all of this and start fresh. To plan this build, I started drawing the general shape and size of the facial features on some tracing paper. With the mouth drawn out, I'm going to make some wooden teeth. So first I cut out these pieces, and then I sanded them down using a Dremel. I need to create some really stunning eyes that immediately grab the viewer's attention. To do this, I need to avoid matte material finishes. So I started looking through my recycling pile and I found these plastic domes. These are recycled from an advent calendar from Christmas. I knew the general look that I was going to go for, but I wanted to experiment a little bit to make sure I could get it right. First, to make the pupils, I used these black jewels and super glued them into place. I then needed to find a way to make a, the white of the eyes a little more opaque. And this is where I started to have a little bit more fun. I had the idea to backlight the eyes using some dollar store LEDs. To make the white of the eyes, I tried using these makeup sponges and used a bit of super glue to melt the two surfaces together. I got the first one nearly right, but it was the second attempt that I learned how much super glue was too much. The plastics reacting with the super glue would cause an exothermic reaction and it would get so hot it would just completely melt and burn. But after experimenting with a few, I had a couple that I was really happy with. I then turned to some acrylic paint to get some more color into these eyes. The moon in game looks quite haggard, like it's woken up from a few too many drinks the night before. So I want to first make the whole eye more yellow and introduce more red around the edges. 
I found squishing the paint through the sponge with my fingers was the best method to blend and make a gradient with some interesting textures. Once the eyes were complete, I needed to sort out the backlighting for each eye. One LED strip later, and we have a nice set of mini headlights. With all the face parts complete, I'm going to need to make a compartment for the batteries to hide in. Somewhere back here will do. I had an idea to enclose this space using these recycled containers. After scooping out this cavity, I fished through the eyes and made sure it all fit together before gluing them in place with some well bond. After taking inventory of my model magic, I realized I needed to bulk up the styrofoam ball a bit. To do this, I used some recycled containers and secured them using a small bit of two-part epoxy resin. Remember to avoid using superglue on styrofoam. The smallest amount of superglue will completely disintegrate a large amount of polystyrene. With all these appendages, it's beginning to look like a, a certain pandemic-inducing viral specimen. To smooth out and strengthen the eye sockets, I used some black EVA foam. I attached a bit of black felt around the eyes to give them a little bit more texture. Once the mouth was dried from all that glue, I painted it all black to conceal any details behind the teeth. Now that's the bloodthirsty soulless void I've been looking for. Now it's time to plaster on the model magic. This first layer of model magic, I'm going to let dry out almost completely before adding the second layer on top. This should prevent a constant battle of deformations through handling the model. After a few days, the first coat was dried enough to start working on the main features. For the eye sockets, I rolled out two strips and squished them down around the eyes. I made sure to keep the upper rim pronounced to form an angry brow later. I then added the bottom lip, and before moving on to the top lip, I wanted to form the nose to get a good understanding of how large I could make it. You know, without making it look too ridiculous. I also need to fit in room for the upper lip here, so I'll need to make it a modest sized nose. I began by forming the bridge and building up to a teardrop shape at the tip. The nostrils here are carved out using some modeling tools. These metal and silicone tips are so handy for manipulating the model magic. If you dip the tool in water, it'll help for blending the clay out. 
As I was designing the battery compartment for the moon, I had this really cool idea. I realized I could make this hidden compartment actually a standout feature. I then thought about the meadow at the end of the game, where you finally meet Majora. The space is truly magical, and I decided to create an out-of-scale version nestled in this massive crater. To make the tree, I used a wooden skewer and split it several times to form these branches. I'm paying extra attention to safety here. I've already had my share of accidents with these knives. So if you're yet to learn the lesson the hard way, be sure to always cut away from yourself. I then painted the tree using various brown dollar store paints and super glued some dry moss to the ends. Before I move on to applying primer, I'm going to give a quick sanding to some certain places to remove that marshmallowy look that the model magic tends to dry into. This is one of my favorite aspects with this modeling clay. Once it's dried, it can be picked or filed away to make extra textures. Now before we begin painting the moon, I had an idea to create some character to make this moon a little more unique. I imagine this rock getting beat up by meteorites. Some leaving vast craters, while others show their resiliency and survive the impact. So I started adding these beads as sort of meteorites that have impacted with the moon. They also have this added effect of looking like moles or warts on the moon's face. Anything to make him look a little more disturbing. <laughs> With the meteor and rock formations glued down, I'm going to move on to priming. Now it's been a bit over a week since we've last touched the moon. We just wanted to make sure everything was thoroughly dry within. Occasionally I've been poking and prodding at the craters to make some natural cracked rock looks, which is just one of those extra fun features about model magic. I'm going to make my own mixture of textured well bond. Basically it's just one part well bond to one part water, and a few drops of Tamiya Color acrylic modeling paints. Now, you're asking yourself, why modeling paints? Well, these paints have an isopropyl solvent to keep the acrylic extremely liquid. The solvent is not friendly to water-based mediums and is primarily used on its own. It's why modelers have such specific color choices. When I try to mix that acrylic paint into the watered down well bond, I get little tiny suspended pieces of paint. So once the well bond dries, it'll become clear and the white of the model magic will be enough for the base color. And then all those tiny little suspended paint bubbles will be sort of creating a sandy look over the entire surface.
once the well bond had dried, we can move on to painting. Now I stuck to acrylic paints from the dollar store, but I have to say I am thoroughly impressed with this cheap silver paint. It sort of has this metallic -y quality to it. And when you mix that with other paints, like their black paint, which is extremely pastel-y, this brings a lot of sheen into it. And I really commend it for that. So basically for these washes, I watered down my acrylic colors and then I only applied little bits to certain areas at a time and always kept a damp paper towel nearby. This would allow me to wipe away excess paint and would prevent any kind of splooching material texture that uh, would really be evident of a painted model. By doing this, it kind of creates more of a uniform look throughout the whole thing. Additionally, you're going to want to layer in multiple different colors. So the more purples and violets and blues that you bring into gray colors will add a lot more depth into them. Instead of just being a simple, boring, flat gray, use these highlight colors in the crevices and creases to just kind of give it more saturation and life when you're viewing it. These sort of colors don't grab your attention immediately, but when you view the object up close, it adds a lot of personality. For the grassy meadow, I used a bunch of different colors, mainly started with a brown to yellowy kind of undertone, and then I built up the greens on top. And with that, the moon is looking pretty much finished. So now it's just all about presentation. Now, as you can see, I left a hole in one of the bead meteors at the top here. And that actually has a greater purpose. This is going to be the hanging method in which I present this piece. So I don't know if this is going to entirely be the, the choice that I go with, but for now, it's a good backup method. Let's see. bend a piece. There we go. And we attach the tree back in place there. The screw is on and then it's complete. Oh, looking at how this is presented, I think we all know what needs to come next. But perhaps that's just a build for another day. Thank you once again for watching this episode of The Artist Studio. If you're looking for more content from me, consider heading over to Patreon. I post exclusive vlog videos over there that are all about me and my creator journey. With that said, thank you once again to my patrons. Literally only the one, Glenn Forrester, thank you so much. We have some Elden Ring videos coming up on the channel, so get subscribed if you're interested in that, and leave a comment if you have any ideas for future builds. Once again, thank you for watching. Now, go get crafty.